their bullshit is so good that it's so believable. And you, you're you so, like, under the spell because it's like you've gotten the proof from the doctors. They're telling you that he has all these medical problems. And, you know, he's he's doing all this orchestrating to prove that he's a victim and he needs medical attention and that because he needs medical attention he can't work okay or he can only work this many hours and then meanwhile you know I'm busting my ass doing what I do okay and I'm not at the apartment I'm doing my rounds of what I have to do and I come back and he is sitting in the apartment with some other dude and their guitars in the middle of the day when he's supposed to be at work and they're just jamming, you know? And I'm like, this is not band camp. This is not a music studio. No, this is my home. And if you want to go do that, go get your own studio. Because you're not going to get us kicked out of the apartment because there are rules about sound and noise. And he's like, but it's during the daytime and I'm not violating. And I said, you are violating because the rules say no music, period. Okay? And this is what I mean about rebellion. He didn't give a crap about what the rules were. All he wanted to do was do what he wanted to do. And he did not care about the consequences. Okay? And when... And when... Um... I'm just getting my bearings here. And when I said, and when I said, sorry, and when I said, um, you know, what, you know, what are you doing? Like, th this is the middle of the day. This is not a band camp. This is not studio hours. You know, like you need, if you want to do that, you need to go rent a professional place this is our home. You're not going to junk it up with groupies and shit. And you're not, you know, and the whole place smell like smoke. And it's like, he knows he's not allowed to smoke in the house, but he smoked in the house that day with the dude sitting there playing their music. And this is what I mean about complete and utter disregard for, for rules, for boundaries, for guidelines, for agreements. He did not give a crap. All he wanted was what he wanted when he wanted it. And he did whatever he... And I, at that moment, I was like, guys, pack up your shit. Get out. And the other guys, they didn't give me a hassle. You know what I mean? They were just like... They started to pack up their gear. And they started to, you know, move it on out. They didn't give me bullshit and flack. They just zipped up their lip, packed up their shit, and started to walk out. And when they were packing up their shit, I said to them, here's the bottom line. This is my home. He is here as a guest. And he has rules to follow. And when he breaks the rules, he loses his privileges. And if he can't honor and respect the rules, then perhaps he's not in a position and ready to get married. Because, you know... I need a team player. I don't need an adversary. So, next thing I know, then, again, it's, it's the, the war-like nature, the, the, the picking of the fights, the, you know, all this bullshit. And, and I would say, did you take your medication today? You know, um, you might want to talk to your sponsor about that because... You know, I have other things to do. And I'd walk out of the room. Now, mind you, this is before he was kicked out, okay? Once he was kicked out and he was in treatment centers and recovery houses and all that other bullshit, he was in a different system, okay? I couldn't manage what he was doing or not doing in that system. And when I would go to visit him, you know, um, on a designated visitor day or whatever it was. Um, you know, he was always bragging about how awesome I was and this is my wifey and you get what I'm saying? Like 
he would play this role and he would do it to like create all this attention to himself and create all this attention around me. And I'd be like, I don't need my ego stroked. Like that does not impress me. So stop doing it. And this is again where I'm saying, you know, some of the problems, you know, in that community, in the drug community, in the recovery community, you know, there's a lot of jealousy. And if you're going to keep throwing up in the air all the things that you're doing and that you can do and that you're better and, you know, it's like the other people in that group, they don't want to hear your shit. And then he's getting all these extra privileges because he's a musician and they're giving him a free elevator pass and he's allowed to go outside on the street to get a pack of cigarettes. You know what? If, if I'm the manager of a big institution that's in the middle of downtown Baltimore and I'm trying to create a drug recovery program, what the hell am I doing giving passes out to musicians to give them extra privileges so that they can go across the street and get a pack of cigarettes when they're supposed to be in a lockdown unit in recovery. And so he would use the credit card. And of course I had access to all this stuff. So I'm seeing the charges come through on that account. And he's like, oh, that was my buddy. I'm like, what do you mean that was your buddy? Well, he had, I, I said, Eric, don't give me a bullshit story. You got a chance right now to come clean, tell me the truth, because I'm going to get to the bottom of this. And then he tells me that, you know, he wanted to go to a Jewish temple because he's Jewish. And um, they wouldn't let him because it's a Christian organization. Meanwhile, he's telling me he's messianic, that he loves Jesus, he loves Yeshua, but meanwhile, simultaneously, he's, you know, saying that he needs to go to a Jewish temple, and they're giving him a pass to get out of this treatment center to go to a Jewish temple. Let me tell you, my friends, when they get out on the outside, their only goal is to get drugs. And then when I talk to other people who had graduated from this HUM program, they're telling me that musicians were actually given drugs and that that's a common, you know, reward system. That if you're a musician and you play in the Christmas musical and, you know, you do all these rehearsals and whatever, they're going to give you, you know, they're going to give you extra drug perks in a drug recovery program. And this is what I mean about how sick the system is. And then it's like, you know, then the next thing you know, I get the call. I, I'm out. You're in a year program, Eric. What do you mean you're out? I'm out, I'm out. Uh, well, I suggest you go back into your program because, you know, I, I can't help you. Well, baby, I need to come home. Uh, Eric, there's been no home for you since you did all the stupid shit that you did. And you've already been through this. That's why you're in a treatment center.